everyone. Welcome to the subject introduction to agriculture. I hope you are all doing okay and you are all adjusting to the new normal. Keep safe always. Our next topic for this subject is the analysis of food production and population growth under developed and developing countries. We have here Malthus principles of population. So who is Malthus? So Thomas Robert Malthus believed that through prevention, population can be controlled to balance the food supply and population. He is an English cleric and a scholar, which published his theory in, 19, in 1798 with entitled The Principle of Population, which he believed that through preventive checks and positive checks, the population would be controlled to balance the food supply with the population level. In 1798, Malthus argued that human population always grows more rapidly than the human food supply until war, disease, or famine reduces the number of people. The growth of human population, which Malthus believed had peaked during his lifetime, and it has risen relentlessly and rapidly over the past three centuries. We have here, the next one is the world population growth from 700 to 2100. From 1700, it is 600 million, while for 2100, it is 10.9 billion, approximately. As we can observe, the developing regions in this time will have 97% of the world's population growth of 1.2 billion people between 2013 and 2020. So we have here now the comparison between developed and developing countries. So developing countries include Bangladesh, we have Philippines, Cambodia, China, Indonesia, Lao PDR, Malaysia, Myanmar, Papua New Guinea, and of course the Philippines. Of all these countries, we will have to focus for Cambodia, Bangladesh, and Philippines. Let's look at the population growth rate of these countries. So since this is a developing countries, so let's look at first Cambodia. So for Cambodia, for the current year 2020, it is 1.41% yearly change. For Bangladesh, it is 1.01. And for the Philippines, it is 1.35. So as you can observe, most of their changes of these developing countries are the same so they are in the same level and it is higher population growth now let's look at the developed country for the developed countries we will have to see the usa the united kingdom brazil and let's look at if they also have a one point something population rate. So for USA, as you can observe, we have 0 0.59, 0 0.60. For United Kingdom, 0 0.5, 0 0.62. While for Brazil, it is 0 0.75. So as you can observe, most of this living in extreme poverty in Asia. So before we will have to look at into the data, let's define first what is poverty. So according to World Bank, in 2018 of the 783 million extremely poor who live below the poverty line of US dollar 1.9 per a day, about 33% of them live in South Asia and 9% in 
in East Asia and Pacific. Asia's rapid economic growth has put it on the track to eradicate extreme poverty, defined by the World Bank as daily consumption of less than 1.25 per person by 2030. So there are a lot of factors to consider or the reason why there is a poverty in Asia. One will be urbanization followed by the population growth, a decrease in agricultural land and poor policy making and also the lack of proper education, which is responsible for the increasing food insecurity in Asia. Based on the figure, it can be gleaned that the agricultural land is not sufficient to support the needs of the rising population, which was already predicted by Malthus in 1790. So as you can observe in the data, the arable land or the agricultural land is still the same, but the population is rising. In terms of the consumption of food for global and regional per capita, we have here for the world for 1997 to 1999, it's 28, uh, 2,803. For 2015, it's 2,940. For 2030, predicted would be 3,050 kilocalorie per capita per day. In terms of fish consumption, so the growth of human consumption of fish, as you can observe, we have here for the developed countries, the color green, it's much slower compared to the developing countries. And of course, the combination of the two would be higher. So one of the main reasons for the increase in the amount of food we consume is the rise in global population. As global population and rates of consumption increase, there is a need to increase the water, food, energy supplies, but to do so in a sustainable manner to meet the needs of all people. Since Philippines is included in developing countries, now let's look at the statistical information of the Philippines. For the population, it contributed to the world's population 1.41%. The life expectancy is 71.66 years old, and the capital is Manila. Major industries is electronics, garments, footwear, pharmaceuticals, chemicals, wood products. For agricultural products, we have sugarcane, coconuts, rice, corn, banana, cassava, pineapple, and ATC. Natural resources, we are very blessed to have these natu natural resources in the Philippines. We have timber, petroleum, nickel, cobalt, silver, gold. And then we also have here the total population from 2014 to 2024, the predicted population of the Philippines. So we have for 2014, it is 998 million then we have 2024 it's 117.26 million so poverty rate in the philippines so the estimate poverty incidence in the philippines per province as of 2012 as you can observe here in the map we have the darker the color of the map the higher the poverty incidence so the national poverty incidence of the Philippines as of 2012 is 26.3%, which is virtually unchanged from 23.4% in 2006. So for the current year poverty rate, we have 19.8%, why compared to 2016, which is 24.5%. So based on the data, according to PNA 2019, the poverty rate in the Philippines is decreasing, so which is a positive note. So when we say poverty, of course, poverty entails more than the lack of income and productive resources to ensure sustainable livelihoods. Its manifestations include hunger and malnutrition, 
limited access to education, and other basic services, social discrimination, and exclusion, as well as the lack of participation in decision making. So according to the Asian Development Bank, the major causes of poverty includes low economic growth, a weak agricultural sector, take note, then increased population rates and high volume of inequality. So now we have the question, can agriculture help in the reduction poverty rate in the Philippines? Of course, the answer is a big yes. So we know that Philippines is an agriculture country, then this would be a challenge for us to improve agriculture. So according to study, agricultural productivity growth reduces poverty through a number of channels. So it increases income of the farmers, increases food supply, and also it provides greater employment opportunities in both rural and urban areas. It also improves health and nutrition and it reduces food poverty by lower, lowering food prices. So according to studies, when you say agriculture, it is the backbone of the developing country's economy. So that would be a challenge for all of us to help in improving the agriculture sector. So that would be all for our topic this uh, for this topic so make sure to read another more literature so that you can have another information about the food analysis of food production and population growth under developed and developing countries.